I'd like to transition straight into our Kickstarter discussion and we are looking at unmasking the era of artificial intelligence. Our artificial intelligence is something that many of us usually stumble on and uh, when we are told and often I must be very very categoric threatened that our jobs are, will be taken over by robots. We do not know how to embrace that particular reality. Can we reconfigure the workspaces uh, so that we can work with robots or are we going to completely relinquish uh, that particular uh, set of tasks to the uh, technologies of uh, the day? Just a preamble before I introduce my guest. We shall, of course, be joined by another a little bit later. Back in 1955, Arthur Samuel created a computer program for a game of checkers on a rudimentary IBM 701 machine that could learn using a combination of uh, tree search algorithm which with land weights, Three. In 1961, it challenged and won over the Connecticut State Championship. Interesting dynamics there. AI and everything that comes with it can be confusing on the bare eye, but why should we be when we have experts that can tell us about that? Welcome with me, Rebecca Mukite, spokesperson at Uganda Communications Commission. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I've just been going through as something that is both confusing <laughs> and winding. Mm -hmm. One, <coughs> that the average corporate worker in Uganda, when you talk about it, mm. they get taken aback. It okay. is threatening. You know, <laughs> we are told if you do not align yourself in mm. terms of skill set, yeah. then AI is going to take over. Mm. Can AI mm -hmm. present the morning show? No. It can't. That's what it I'm saying. cannot. <laughs> You're very <laughs> safe. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Unmasking the era <coughs> of uh, artificial intelligence. First, take us through what AI is. Given that at Uganda Communications Commission, you're pretty much dealing with managing and monitoring the whole workings of technology advancements in the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good morning to our dear viewers. Um, I'm happy to be here this morning. It's a so dicey welcome. topic. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence, it uh, scratches people um, in a sensitive way. That's right. But um, just like we nurture our intelligence as human beings, mm. artificial intelligence is intelligence that is artificially or mimics the human learning pattern. Mm. And it's powered by computers and technology. But it greatly leans on connectivity through the internet. Mm. Um, in terms of um, artificial intelligence in or the extent of technology evolvement, um, in this day and age, the gadgets we interface with, mm -hmm. the different components that connect to the internet and networks that we interface with, collect a big amount of data and information from us. And they learn. They mm -hmm. have the ability to collect vast amounts of data. Yeah. Now. Those vast amount of data are then processed. So these are systems that can, one, collect data. Mm. Two, they can process this data. Mm. And over time, when they collect this data over a long period of time, then they can create patterns and analyze this data, which then translates into intelligence. Just okay. like we also nurture mm. our knowledge and intelligence by reading, by learning through different formal and informal curricula, mm. even systems that are computerized d are designed to do the same thing. So that then is artificial intelligence. Okay. So that, what I hear and uh, that partake from uh, your submission is that we have a reality that we must embrace, hook or crook. Yes, it is here to stay. It has been here for a long time. Mm. And uh, right now it is here to stay, but um, what we need to encourage people mm. or what people need to know that you can never get rid of the human component mm. in life generally, a bit, a bit whether in the workspace mm. or mm. regardless of how much you automate mm. or, or um, automate processes or mm. systems, the human component is unique. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, was created by uh, God, and uh, it's it's what keeps the world moving. Oh, okay. So, 
people need to rest assured and understand that artificial intelligence is here to enhance mm. their productivity, to complement their God-given uh, strengths mm. and abilities, mm. to make them more productive, to make them do much more than they would do. Okay. Yes. In light of the African condition, there have been fits and starts when it comes to embracing technology, but uh, we shall be delving a little bit deeper into that and how best African societies can uh, harness the power of artificial intelligence to drive the required economic transformation that is propped by many of our leaders and when companies for that matter but allow us a welcome Bilton Meru founder and uh, chief executive officer at Technovo welcome to the program yeah, thank you so much. and a very good morning. good morning we are unmasking the era of artificial intelligence uh, being a uh, honcho in tech no doubt bring us up to speed with uh, a lot that we might not be uh, privy to she has already taken us through uh, I have an idea okay and uh, it has completely helped me get at ease most of the time when people come to me AI AI it is threatening they're telling me recondition yourself mm. otherwise your job is gone am I safe yeah you safe still okay yeah because uh, artificial intelligence is not here to uh, take over jobs yeah mm. it's just here to, to enhance like she was saying yeah because uh, people uh, who are willing to only adapt to the new changes in artificial intelligence mm. will still retain their jobs, yeah? That's right. But now those who are not willing will definitely be left out. Yeah, because AI is here to stay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the state of affairs, especially the technology landscape within the country? Uh, particularly Uganda, we, mm. uh, we, I would say we're really doing good when it comes to information technology. Yeah, especially we've seen quite a number of startups mm. in uh, in uh, IT startups in uh, uh, research, science, in R and D. Yeah, mm. so all these ones are embracing technology. Yeah, different schools as well embracing technology. So we we uh, uh, if on a scale of one to ten, Uganda would be about eight nine. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Does that apply to the? Population that is in far flung areas, including my very own Butaleja. Your very own Butaleja. Okay, so I uh, would look at it in this way. Uh. I would say Uganda's population, most of the most of the people are youth here. Yeah? Mm. Then these youth have really adapted to technology, yeah, uh. easily, yeah. Uh, in, even in schools, so mm. you would find your people from Butaleja studying in different schools here in Kampala, uh. and then these schools are really embracing technology, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, when it comes to the day-to-day -day, uh, workings of the economy it could be education it could be public health it could be infrastructure mm -hmm. and generally the way people live their lives what is the potential that AI has within our settings as a people the potential within our settings as people mm. uh, away from those who are tech savvy and belong to the one percent or two percent okay. of the population of the population mm. yeah okay now ai i would def i would definitely say it's uh it's making really things easy because uh gone at days when people used to go to school to learn especially if you want to be a software developer uh -huh. you needed to go to school to learn nowadays you don't need to go to school to become a software developer you just sit back home as long as you can interpret, you can speak English. That's what matters. So AI will help you understand technology, understand development. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. You understand software development using AI. It's very easy. Uh -huh. It's like your other personal assistant. Yeah. So you don't need, uh, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like it should be very structured. You shouldn't be afraid. Uh, what is the framework governing AI in the country in terms of uh, information technology uh, ministry? We've seen many times at conferences where government officials come to uh, guide us on a few aspects and then in the process of guiding us, they stumble <laughs> on their own roles and it's mm. quite confusing. What's the framework governing AI in Uganda? Um, <coughs> over and above the other um, existing laws and regulations that govern ICT because AI is, is powered by ICT, ICT and connectivity. Okay. So the we I can't talk about uh, one framework that strictly governs AI. Mm. It works um, alongside all the other existing frameworks, 
and uh, laws and regulations. Of course, there's a communications act. There's, on top of that, there's the um, national strategy, 4IR strategy, mm -hmm. that was launched uh, a few years back that has, uh, I think, eight objectives, which are essentially what the government is working on mm. in terms of how are we going to harness AI with our current status quo. Because mm. for you to do a strategy, you have to acknowledge this is where we this are as a nation. Mm. And then we have to see where are the gaps, which are the opportunities, which ones are our weaknesses. And then we see how to leverage AI to leapfrog as a country and as a sector. So on top of the fourth industrial re revolution mm. strategy, mm. the ministry recently launched the digital transformation roadmap, which is also strongly leaning on the fourth industrial revol uh, revolution. revolution. Yeah. So you find that uh, the 4IR is like one of the pillars that mm. can support uh, digital transformation okay. and by digital transformation we are looking at how to enhance the livelihoods of Ugandans mm. using ICTs mm. in all the different sectors okay yeah. so essentially artificial intelligence is a part of the digital disruption that is happening within the settings of what is described as the fourth or fifth fourth, the fourth mm -hmm. industrial revolution now when you talk about industrial revolution you begin to again take me back to what stages we could be at or ought to be at but have not gone through another that should cut about us into one mm -hmm. those are inconsistencies that many african societies are facing and uganda mm -hmm. in particular mm -hmm. so you find that at one point in time you are in a boardroom where the people who are supposed to be entrenching these tools to you are struggling with them um i think what we need to acknowledge mm. is that uh, just like uh, my fellow guest here um, we have a unique situation as a developing country yeah sure we have one extreme of the young people who have been exposed who have these skills yeah. who are very tech savvy who are harnessing these skills but then we have another divide of mm. our population the people who are in Butaleja the people who are in uh, <laughs> Namisid or where I come Pirit. from or yeah. Nakapiripirit or yeah. those rural areas which people are still getting onto mm -hmm. the basic mobile phone. That is right. And uh, as we craft our regulatory tools and instruments, I'm speaking as uh, Uganda Communications Commission, mm. our delicate balance is seeing how do we support these people who are ahead of the line mm -hmm. while at the same time accommodating the big percentage of the population which is still using basic communication services that's right now that balance is where we now have to do a lot of collaboration mm -hmm. within the sector and with other sectors and other government entities to see that this average ugandan mm -hmm. how can they <laughs> How can they, yeah. over and above getting on board the ICTs, mm. start mm. now leveraging the advantages of technology like AI mm -hmm. in their everyday lives? Okay. Now, that story for us as Uganda Communications Commission starts with connectivity. connectivity there yeah. has to be a network. Mm -hmm. People have to be able to use that network. So connectivity and internet connectivity are very important Th that's where the story starts from yeah. so we can't talk about leveraging AI when there is no connectivity mm -hmm. and that's our first core after there is connectivity people need basic skills mm. basic skills to be able to use the smart device yeah because everything about artificial intelligence whether on a smart v device or a big system or whether it's tapping data whether it's earpods starts with you being able to interact and probe the, yeah, system. the system so when people do not have basic digital skills mm. then even when these systems are developed and they can m help them cross the road or do whatever they need mm. when they don't have the basic skills then there's a gap there so our first entry point is connectivity. Our second entry point is digital skills. After digital skills, we then look at the security aspects mm. because 
as you get people on board these connected gadgets mm -hmm. or these networks, these very intelligent systems, mm. then you also have to help them to keep safe there. That's right. But still, for you to be able to handhold the public to be safe online, mm. they need basic digital skills. Basic digital skills. To know how does the gadget work, what is my role in this, what is UCC doing, what does my telecom provider do to protect me, mm. how is my bank protecting me, but most importantly, how do I protect myself as I get online? All right. Yeah. We shall be talking data protection a little bit later, but let me uh, just... Uh, concentrate on the aspect of uh, curation of data because when you talk about intelligence it's mm -hmm. the ability to use information that you have in order to shape a certain decision or a way of doing things mm -hmm. now AI offers humans the ability to curate data a little faster and mm -hmm. more effectively for example at workplaces and human resources when letters and uh, applications are brought in the average human mind cannot figure out very quickly that this one can go to this section let this go to the other but AI can help yeah. especially human resource managers be able to quickly work through if we are looking for a, a producer what are the set skills that we need and how many are coming in on a daily mm -hmm. where do they go the stuff like that mm -hmm. that's one example mm -hmm. could you cite others where the layman out there can quickly figure out how they can improve their own rollout of services or even what they get on a daily basis okay um i would give an example of international football for instance yeah ah, there you are <laughs> <laughs> okay so now with uh, international football mm -hmm. we have uh, three aspects yeah mm. we have glt which is goal line technology yep that white line that that white strip you see in uh -huh. the football pitch Yep. That's AI. And then we have uh, AV, AVAR, that's assistant video. Uh -huh. um, assistant video. That guy that has yes, taken referee. the passion out of <laughs> exactly. the game. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so long ago, you could, you could find about six to five referees in mm, a year. They're trying to figure out figure what out went right, wrong. Yeah. Mm. Right now, you maximum theory because mm. of AI. Yeah. So you find uh, uh, the video assistant referee watches uh, different Clip. video mm -hmm. footages mm. in a pitch and then it helps a referee who is on ground to make a decision that's right yeah and even even the balls themselves they have chips nowadays so when mm -hmm. it crosses a certain line in the field it, it, it the system knows whether it was a goal or not yeah yeah so the referee will easily make 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 a decision mm -hmm. yeah after being assisted by what? The by the other video assistant. And uh, that is okay. essentially artificial intelligence. That's artificial intelligence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Within Kampala, if somebody is uh, moving around the streets and interacting on a daily basis, mm -hmm. how often do we engage with AI? With AI? Yeah. Uh, maybe traffic lights. Uh huh. Yeah, because uh, let's say you, you, you need to cross, yeah, you already see red, green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially in Tebe Road. Yeah. Okay. There is AI because uh, usually they count 30 seconds. 30 right? seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know that, okay, after 30 seconds, it knows which route should go next, mm. which 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 route, which cars are going this side and then which cars are going the other side, yeah? What's oh. the effective... Okay, I know. Submit, but also <laughs> you must explain to me okay. why, for yeah. example, if you're at an intersection mm. on the traffic lights, AI should be able to know that this particular road today has mm. a lot of cars okay. compared to the ones coming from say Nakawa mm. so we should be able to let these ones that are packed on the road and a little more than these ones to go than necessarily being based on time for example 45 seconds okay mm. okay mm. I wanted to give a relatable example of how mm. People are interacting unknowingly with artificial yeah. intelligence. Sure. Um, I'm very sure a lot of uh, our viewers have TikTok as accounts. Mm. And uh, mm. even when you don't have an account, when you get onto TikTok my and... My cameraman has a some TikTok. Of the <laughs> <laughs> some of the videos you watch, the first few videos you watch, yeah. the AI system that's powering or supporting TikTok is able to profile the kind of content you want. Mm. And then it will serialize it and line it up. So you find that you watch a few videos of people who are washing carpets. And then all of a sudden, your mm. feed is full of the exact content you're interested that in. you're interested if in, If you yeah. go there to watch football highlights. All the football the will pour. All the football will come uh, up front. In, you don't even have to 
query it anymore, it comes automatically. So that's artificial intelligence. Oh, I get you. When you open up a Spotify account, they ask you what kind of music do you like or oh. which artist do you like. And then you select them and the rest AI does for you music selections. It knows what songs you like. Okay. So it, the system can profile you mm. and determine Based on the things you buy online, this person will like this dress, hey, so it will advertise. That's the why right on my <laughs> Facebook page, I have a lot of uh, barbecue roasting machine exactly. stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was watching some Turkish stuff the other day, and mm. all of a sudden, every time and yes. I'm seeing roasted stick. Yes, Interesting. so that's, that's artificial intelligence. We're going to have to go for a break. A lot of amazing stuff when it comes to AI. When we return, we shall be giving you an update on uh, some of the issues that are going on around Kampala that could be able to shape the circumstances of the day. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. Ooh, yeah. You're watching Morning at NTV. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kibet, reporting live from Busavala, where the much-anticipated uh, special or extraordinary National Delegates Conference for the Forum for Democratic Change was uh, supposed to take place. The deployment there speaks of what is on the ground, including a court order that is blocking that particular gathering, as called by the party chairman, uh, Waswa Biriga. We shall continue updating you on the situation and the developments therein as and how they evolve. Let me return to the studio and just wrap up the conversation on artificial intelligence. I'm asking the question, seeing the goings on in the world of politics, one would want to understand how can AI help politicians? Is there a way it can help them get to terms with decision making? With me, I have uh, an official from the Uganda Communications Commission, specifically the spokesperson, Rebecca Mokite, as well as the founder and uh, chief executive at Technoval, uh, Bilton Mweru. You've been seeing what's happening. The politics defines the economics of the day. It shapes what happens. Okay. Might AI help us realign politics? Of course. <laughs> how, how, how? Politicians must be able to embrace the ability to make decisions. Data is important, but when it comes to what is happening right there, well, I'm bringing it in, not because we actually have to discuss it, but mm -hmm. trying to tell you and the nation that the solutions for politics in this country are hard to find. Let's return to what we know best. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask the question with regard to what lies at the heart of a true transformation when we entrench ourselves in the workings of AI. That question will be for built on Mary a little bit later, but first, at Uganda Communications Commission, what campaigns are in place, not only to entrench AI, but to ensure that all that must benefit from it actually do? Okay, um, like I mentioned earlier, AI does not work in isolation. Mm -hmm. It is powered by ICT, and connectivity to the internet. That's right. So over and above the supply side where we know that there is connectivity and people can have access to the networks, there are other things we have to do to tweak our population mm. to start harnessing the power of AI. But in order to harness the power of AI, people have to get online. People have to know to have basic skills on of how to use both the internet and connectivity mm -hmm. to get either information or get what they want. So UCC has been undertaking um, an aggressive digital scaling campaign for, dig for different constituents. We started with powering schools with ICT labs mm -hmm. and um, that has been happening for the past over 20 to 10 years. And you find that uh, right now we are speaking of a statistic of over 1,300 secondary schools wow. which have both uh, computers mm. and those computers connected to connectivity through Reno. Mm. So you find that when you create that generation of young people who are now interfacing with 
computers and learning how to use computers to That's create, uh, to search for information, to do research. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is supported by the new curriculum. We're bringing up a generation of young people who have both basic digital skills, who know how to navigate the internet productively. Mm. Because we were speaking shortly before we came back on air, there are so many young people who are online. Mm. But what are they doing online? Yeah. Dancing challenges? <laughs> what we need to see that we nurture a population mm. that uses the internet and connectivity productively. Now back to the digital scaling campaign. Our digital scaling campaign has been broken down into different constituents. We have a campaign for women, uh, for farmers, uh, for persons with disability. And when we break down these different constituents into their specific learning spaces, we understand what their needs are better. Mm -hmm. And we also empower them how to then integrate ICTs into their lives to enhance their productivity. Now, how does AI come in here? AI is powered by data collection. Mm. So, one, people have to start creating data and creating their profiles online. That's right. Now, when you get that mechanic out there who is learning how to use the internet to increase his uh, mechanical skills or that mm. salon lady, mm -hmm. now, once they are connected on the internet and they have basic digital skills of using the internet, That's right. AI can then enhance their productivity through looking, scouting for relevant content. Mm -hmm. Most of this content is actually free yeah, and sure. available online. Yeah. AI can help them access bigger markets because AI will create a profile of this person. That's right. They know that this is a Toyota mechanic. Mm. Uganda has so many Toyota cars. These are the latest trends in Toyotas. Mm. This is uh, their Toyota spare parts coming from here That's to right. here. So this particular person, that mechanic, that salon lady, or that restaurant that is now running downtown, when this person starts tracking their business online, mm. then they will know what to buy, they will know what the new markets are, mm. they will know the, know the latest trends, they will get access to new skills. Mm. Because there's a lot of free information online that people don't even know that exists. That's right. But all that can be powered by AI when people get online and they use the internet productively. Um, I also have to talk about the Very aspect quickly. of yeah mm. of public awareness. Mm. Um, it's important for people to know that every time they interface with technology, it's collecting information, That's right. information about them, information about their usage. Mm. So, like we're talking about when you do a search about purple dresses, uh -huh. then all of a sudden you have all these adverts running mm. <laughs> about purple <laughs> dresses on the side of your screen. Yeah. So. Once you know that this gadget is collecting your information all the time, then you become more cautious mm -hmm. about the kind of information you're putting online That's right. and how you're using the internet. Mm. So we are also doing a massive campaign to create awareness in the public about productive usage, safe usage, how do I navigate safely, uh -huh. what information am I putting online, mm -hmm. is my information safe, how do I protect it, that is a That's bit a, of what that you're essentially doing. means that every user who is online has a vault somewhere that has all the information yeah. about what you've searched for, what are your interests. Yeah. And that comes down to data safety. If somebody were able to get into these vaults and understand what people are up to or what their preferences are, they could misuse that data. Yeah. That is an aspect of AI. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether there are safeguards for that. You will comment on that but uh, uh, the question I wanted us to begin with is something she hint, hinted on productive engagement online and the use of AI where are the clear-cut opportunities and how best can the youth be able to leverage on that okay um, I, would, I would not really be specific to youth but mm. uh, the general population here yeah. that's right yeah um first and foremost for any business business person mm. you right this this is the right time for you to to implement ai in your art in your business yeah. whether it is small whether big any mm. kind of any kind of uh business you're doing yeah, yeah. Uh, from um putting your business online like you said uh leveraging uh e-commerce solutions that are pleasant mm. yeah they, uh, definitely the moment you go online for any, any any kind of business you have you 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 reach uh broader markets yeah, yeah. And then the other thing would be 
for the youth, it's real easy. Instead of uh, uh, doing whatever you do with your phones, uh, uh, TikToking, uh, in other things, yeah, you you could use AI within your phone and then make generate income using your art, your easy phone without uh, really qualifications. Mm. For instance, there is uh, a new trend of uh, Chat GPT. Mm. There is bad. All these AIs have come into place here. Yeah? They are hoping right now. If I want to write for someone a song, I can just reverse AI, yeah? So I can become a script writer. Mm. I can become uh, a book publisher using AI, yeah? Definitely. So it, it allows me to uh, generate income, yeah? It's time saving, mm. and then I'm generating income as well. Mm. Instead of uh, doing this normal content uh, creation, like, like they always call it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and then the other yeah. thing would be, uh, it's just an opener for businesses, yeah? Mm. So if you do not leverage technology right now, truth is you're going to be left out. Yeah, because uh, you will end up becoming a consumer market, like mm. going to the consumer market instead of being a giant, yeah? Because mm -hmm. people are doing these things, like people are implementing. Uh, uh, now we have uh, IFRIS. You find local supermarkets in villages mm. being forced to use IFRIS. Okay. For, for URA, yeah? yeah? So if you do not embrace tech right now, you'll be left out. And nowadays, even if I hear you, you are a put in place, if you do not have if it's anybody in your, in, your mm. what, in your kind of business, your retail or whatsoever. So it's high time for businesses to really get on board. And now for youth, it's very easy. Um, and actually, like uh, UCIS is doing, when us back at Technoval, we're doing mm. almost the same thing. Okay. We train our students, mm. uh, advanced technologies, AI solutions, and all that, yeah? So we have been piloting in two schools, and it's been successful, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have remote programs you could really engage in, really, uh, you, you communicate, you collaborate with different minds, yeah? yeah. And very easy, back, back, uh, sit back home, and then you're able to, to access all our lessons and our programs, very easy. So you uh, not only waste your time, but you will uh, have access to these tailored solutions for mm. you, tailored content. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Let me allow Rebecca Mukete to wrap this up yeah. by answering the overarching question. UCC and government, is it creating enough collaborative spaces for tech entrepreneurs mm. to be able to leverage AI and uh, avail the products and uh, services or even the innovations required mm. for actors within the economy yes we are ucc is doing a lot to create an ecosystem that works mm. um it can't be one action That's they right. have to be a number of things that are working together to create an enabling environment mm. and uh, like i mentioned earlier we start with uh, creating uh, policies and uh, regulations that catalyze different entities to come up and thrive mm -hmm. and what do I mean we from the government side um, of course the government has put in put in place mm -hmm. the four hour strategy the digital transformation roadmap okay. um, these uh, communications act of 2013 and all those instruments are speaking towards one thing oh, okay. broadband powering social economic transformation mm -hmm. and uh, you find that the pillars of power in social economic transformation is essentially the regulatory aspect of what UCC is doing uh, in different ways. Mm, there is okay. from the supply side to make sure there's connectivity, mm. but then there's also the demand side on mm. how we can see and work with other sectors to integrate ICTs into other sectors to increase efficiency and productivity. And that's um, together with collaboration, standard setting, collaboration both locally and internationally. Okay. So there's a range of things that are going on that we can't quickly go through in All this right. limited time. Of course, you can be rest assured the conversation will continue at any one time. It can continue online, of course, being the space within which AI works. Many thanks, Rebecca Mokite, spokesperson at Uganda Communications Commission, and many thanks to YouTube, Bilton Meru, founder and chief executive officer at Technoval.
that will do it for the Kickstarter discussion. But Morning at 10 TV does continue. We shall have updates a little bit later on the developments of the day, especially in the world of politics. I'm wondering how can the Forum for Democratic Change right about now be able to curate data on what the delegates across the country think about the president and the secretary general or even the spokesperson and all these other uh, people, including founder Kiza Besige, and then get that data together and be able to make decisions AI style. I'll be right back.